Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. So uh, not that long ago, I saw that the guys over at Cool Laboratory released a brand new uh, liquid metal thermal paste to the market. The uh, Cool Laboratory uh, Liquid Extreme, uh, which is like some of the new and improved uh, liquid metal option to the market uh, to compete against the uh, uh, there are there are other uh, versions of liquid metal like the Cool Laboratory Liquid Pro or Ultra or even the uh, Thermal Grizzly Conductor note. So uh, I got a little bit interested, so I decided to buy one tube of this Liquid Extreme and see how it performs against the uh, top of the range liquid metal on the market, the uh, Thermal Grizzly uh, Conductor note. Uh, as I'm kind of interested, which is the thermal paste or which is the best thermal interface material uh, overall. And uh, liquid metal is very important for deleted CPUs, uh, especially between the uh, CPU die and the IHS. And uh, that's where we mostly use it. Uh, I really don't, I don't ever use liquid metal between uh, the CPU IHS and the cooler itself, or between a GPU and the uh, GPU cooler. So. Uh, we will be comparing the two on uh, my deleted uh, 8700K, uh, which I'll test on the EVGA Z390 Dark, uh, as I can't use the ASRock Z170M OC formula anymore because it's not uh, functional anymore. So uh, we will test it on the Dark and see which one is better. So uh, when just looking at the uh, Liquid Extreme, it's nothing special. Now, no really. Uh, uh, nothing really important on the uh, packaging itself. Uh, as always, uh, uh, as always, you should not use a li liquid metal uh, tin on an aluminium-based uh, heatsink. So uh, don't use one of these on. I mean, don't use these if you have uh, aluminium-based uh, coolers. So uh, the uh, thermal conductivity rating uh, for the uh, liquid extreme is 41 watts per meter kelvin. That's what they say on their website. And uh, for conduct and out, uh, it says uh, 73 watts per meter Kelvin on the packaging. So uh, I don't really, uh, I don't tend to watch this uh, value too much. So uh, I just like to uh, test the uh, products actually myself and see which one actually does better when it's tested in a real world scenario. So. Uh, so uh, I think without further ado, let's get this uh, uh, packaging open and see what comes with the uh, liquid metal thermal paste. So that's the uh, liquid metal itself. And they also include you a cleaning wipe uh, set, like I think this is just a cleaning pad with, which has some uh, uh, liquid, I mean some alcohol uh, absorbed to it. But I use I don't I will not use it. Then uh, some uh, cleaning pad, as well as two uh, swipes to uh, spread the uh, film, uh, the liquid metal paste onto the uh, CPU itself. So uh, nothing really special uh, about it. It's pretty much the same with conductor notes. So. Uh, uh, I don't think we have to unbox that, as we have already seen that many, many times before. So, uh, how I how I spread the uh, liquid metal to the CPU, it's actually quite simple. You just have to make sure that the uh, uh, the surface is clean uh, from any uh, residues, and uh, you can also see that I have covered the uh, few golden contact pads on the. CPU PCB with st some standard thermal paste, uh, just to make sure that the liquid metal can't get on top of on top of those because liquid metals do conduct electricity. So these are technically not even these are technically not that safe to use compared to more standard thermal paste options. So you just have to apply a very small amount of it on top of the uh, uh, CPU itself like that and uh, you must always spread uh, liquid metal thermal paste because these do not uh, spread uh, that well compared to more standard uh, thermal pastes uh, so uh, they just go all over the place so you must spread spread it yourself I can just you can use uh, you can use even a, like a standard uh, cleaning cotton pad it's totally fine to spread 
the uh, liquid metal uh, on the CPU. So we just do so we just spread it like this. It's very very easy to make sure that the entire surface is covered uh, and it like looks like very shiny and uh, continuous. So uh, sometimes it's a little bit annoying to uh, spread these if you're like if your uh, pad isn't clean it, it only starts to remove the uh, liquid metal from the surface so then you have to start all over again but so that's pretty much how it looks like when it's uh, spread so uh, we will then just, uh, sometimes you might want to add another layer of the thermal, of the liquid metal onto the uh, IHS part uh, as well, but it's, it's not uh, totally necessary. You can just go on like that with only liquid metal spread onto the CPU die itself. And uh, then we will just get this, the CPU mounted uh, in the socket and I will use a standard conventional thermal paste on the IHS. And then we will then just see the uh, actual numbers and see which liquid metal is doing better. All right, so on to the conclusion. So uh, the end result is that they are both pretty much the same when compared under the IHS. So between the uh, uh, the actual core and the IHS. So uh, the end result was that the uh, uh, average of the maximum core temperatures for the uh, a cool laboratory liquid extreme uh, ended up being uh, exactly 65 degrees so 65.0 and uh, when compared to the uh, ambient room temperature uh, the end result ended up being 38.6 degrees uh, when and then for the uh, thermal grizzly conductor knot the average core maximum temperature was 64.33 degrees so uh, 0 0.7, almost 0 0.7 degrees uh, colder temperature or cooler temperature. And uh, the, when compared to the ambient uh, room temperature, the uh, uh, thermal crystal conduct and out uh, scored 37.8 degrees. So that is almost one degree uh, cooler. So like 0 0.8 degrees. So uh, they are very much uh, almost identical so the, the so the results are pretty much within the margin of error so it shows that both of these products are really really great uh, pricing wise the uh, liquid extreme cost me 10.9 euros uh, with shipping included for this uh, small tube and uh, the conductor out cost 9.9 euros with shipping included so the uh, conductor out is slightly cheaper over here so I paid both of these tubes myself so this is not a sponsored video I was just I was just interested in this brand new liquid metal option from cool laboratory so uh, I really wanted to do a test for you guys to, to show which one is better as I always want to use the best possible uh, thermal interface material with my CPUs and GPUs and uh, you have to use liquid metal uh, with deleted CPUs if you want to get the best possible result on air or water cooling. For sub-zero overclocking purposes you cannot use liquid metal because the, the because the thermal performance just goes so bad uh, after you go like colder than plus 10 on the CPU. So these are just best possible products for air or water cooling. They are better performing than indium solder between the actual core and the IHS. So uh, that that is also something you have to keep in mind. So, uh, yeah, the conclusion is that they are both uh, very good products. Uh, if you have conductor nut available and it is also cheaper than the uh, Liquid Extreme, then I would probably pick the uh, conductor nut. It has been out for a while. It's very good uh, liquid metal option. The only minus part is that it really squirt, uh, squirts out from the uh, tube very, very easy. So be very careful when you apply it. So uh, it's much, uh, it is much uh, safer to do it, to do the application outside the motherboard. So like on the on a table, just like I did, because uh, if you get unlucky, you might uh, shoot some liquid metal in the CPU 
socket on the motherboard, so uh, be very careful. But yeah, so that's the end result. Almost identical, conduct out being almost one degree cooler uh, with the 8700K at 5.2 gigahertz, uh, 4.7 on the cache, and I used 1.32 on the vCore with minus 50% small VDRU option, and uh, it the real VCO value ended up being just over the set, just over the set value, so like 1.34 uh, volts. Uh, and I used K-type thermal probe to uh, measure the ambient room temperature, so it always kind of creeped, uh, creeped up towards the end of the test. Uh, I uh, tested the uh, thermal interface materials by running Pra95 26.6 version for 20 to 30 minutes. That is enough to uh, see the end result of each uh, thermal paste product. So uh, the uh, ambient room temperature always was kind of like 24.8 degrees uh, when I started the test and it always like creep, uh, creep it up towards like mid 26 uh, at the end of the test so after 20 to 30 minutes of burning test so like the ambient room temperature ended up being like 26.5 for each of the uh, thermal paste options. But yeah if you like this if you like this uh, short uh, review and uh, test comparison, then please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and maybe leave a comment down below. And uh, I'll see you next time.